and good morning students so in the previous classes in my voice notes and some of the video notes we have discussed about the previous session that is electric potential but in this session we are trying our best to solve some video lectures okay so in this session we are discussing about gauss flow and its applications so before going to gauss flow and application we first of all know about the electric flux which is a very important concept to going into the concept of gauss flow okay so electric flux before going to the concept of electric flux let us consider you can see in the figure let us consider a surface s okay a surface s and in this the this surface s is present in a non uniform electric field that's a very important one this electric field what whatever i have shown here this one is a non uniform electric field and this surface s is present in this non uniform electric field so what is our aim now our aim to find out what is the amount of electric field lines okay passing through this total surface area s this is our aim. and this is nothing but your electric flux so to find out this to find out this we have to take a very small region ds in this total surface area s why because we cannot find out in the physics we cannot find out the total the electric flux for the total surface area s we first take a small surface area ds and because in through this surface area ds we assume that the number of field lines or the electric field lines becomes immense constant okay so that's why let us consider a small area ds okay and this is your direction of ds which i have shown here this is the direction of ds and this is the direction of the electric field so the electric field and the direction of ds ds is the area okay the angle between them is theta okay so what is our aim now we have to find out the number of electric field lines passing through this small area ds we have to find it okay so now how we find it let us this electric flux i will denote it as a phi okay so i will denote it as a phi so our aim to find out this phi hmm. so phi is nothing but phi means again i will repeat phi means the number of electric field lines passing through this area ds okay so phi so before finding out the phi let us because as it is a small area ds so i will take this phi electric flux as a d phi so d phi is nothing but the dot product between the electric field intensity and this area vector ds okay so d phi is equal to e dot ds so that implies so what what you have to do here as you have know we have to find out the integration of this one so that's why the total flux passing through this small area ds phi is equal to integration over e dot ds that is equal okay so phi is equal to integration over e dot ds let us box it so this is the expression this is a very important one this is the expression of an electric flux passing through any closed surface area or passing through any surface area if i'll put a circle here then it is a closed one if i'll remove this one then the integration become a open loop integration okay so phi is equal to, so the basic fundamental formula of flux electric flux passing through any surface area s is equal to phi is equal to e dot ds and this integration i have to do through the surface area s okay so phi is equal to integration e dot ds you students have to remember this formula because from the problem point of view this is very important phi is equal to integration over e dot this is the dot product e dot ds very simple okay so that is equal to can easily find out this integration e dot ds means e ds cos theta you can easily look at over here this is e this is ds this is cos theta that means in between e and ds yeah, there is an angle theta so that's why my equation becomes correct okay so this is general formula of the flux phi is equal to e ds cos theta okay so now we have to apply this electric flux concept whatever i have discussed here okay to this gauss flow so let us discuss about the gauss flow now okay 
So let us discuss about the dose. So, as we have discussed in the electric box, we have to find out the number of electric field lines passing through any surface area. It may be a closed surface area, it may be an open surface area. If it is a closed surface area, then that is phi is equal to closed integration over it dot ds. If it is open surface area, then the, it becomes open integration over it dot ds. Very simple. Okay. So now, but in this Gauss law, first of all, we have to know that this law you have to apply for a closed surface area. That is a very important one. First, this is the first concept. Okay. The Gauss law, you must have to apply the Gauss law for a closed surface area. You cannot apply it for an open surface area. What do you mean by closed surface area? Closed surface area means you have to take a surface area which has become closed from both sides or all the sides. For example, a cylinder, for example, a sphere. Okay. So these are the uh, surfaces which are remains closed from all these sides. So now there is a question arises in your mind, I think, that what does it mean the closed surface and how will consider the closed surface areas? Let us discuss about these things. Okay. So, closed surface area that means in the chapter number one that is electric charge, there is a part or there is a section that is distribution of charge. I think already we have discussed in the classes distribution of charge. Distribution of charge means this is a point charge. If that point charge is distributed over line, that becomes a line charge that may be positively charged or that may be negatively charged. It depends upon the us, whatever I will take. This is a point charge, again, this is a point charge. This is a line charge. The line charge may be positively charged, the line charge may be negatively charged. Okay, these are distribution of charges. And if the charge is a distribution over a surface, then it is a surface charge. Okay, and in case of line charge, I will take a very important variable that is line charge density or line charge distribution. So lambda, I I have already discussed this thing. So lambda is equal to the total number of charge per unit length. Lambda is equal to QIL. We have already discussed that. One. And for a surface charge, it may be positively charged or it may be negatively charged. Okay, but for this surface charge, we have to take what? Now we have to take here. We are taking the line charge density. So in this, we have to take surface charge density. Where is it? So surface charge density, I will take it as a rho. Okay. So rho is equal to Q divided by A. That is total charge per unit area. Where is it? Okay. Now, if the charge is distributed over a volume, suppose I will take a volume. Let us take it as a box. Okay. So if the box will be positively charged throughout. Okay, and it may be also negative which has to out. Then in this or in this part or in this volume, what you will take now? Like, we will take the volume charge density. That is your sigma. Okay, so sigma we have already discussed that one. So sigma is equal to that is again the total charge residing in this volume divided by the volume q by v. So these things, these three concepts we have already discussed in the previous classes. So that is lambda is that is lambda is your line charge density. Again, I will lambda is your line charge density, that is rho is your surface charge density and sigma is your volume charge density. Okay? So this is your Q by L, this is your Q by A and this is your Q by B. These three concepts are very important to discuss about the Gaussian. Because here we are all discussing about the distribution of charge. We are not taking a single charge. Okay? So before discussing or before going to the Gauss law, we have discussed about this distribution of charges. Hmm. So let us directly go to the Gauss law now. Hmm. So as just in the previous two minutes, we, have, we I told that the Gauss law is only applicable for the closed surface. Okay. So closed surface means here we have to take the charge distribution of a closed surface. That is a very important one. So first of all, let us uh, talk about the statement. Okay. So the statement, the Gauss law states that, this is a very important one, the Gauss law states that the total lines of force passing through any closed surface, okay, the total lines of force passing through any closed surface, whatever closed surface you can take, it may be a cylinder, it may be a box, it may be a sphere. 
So whatever the closed surface you can take, the number of lines of force passing through this surface area, let us take it as 5. Because this number of lines of force passing through this closed surface, this is nothing but an electric flux. I have discussed in, in the previous. So 5 is equal to hmm, the total charge enclosed by that surface, whatever surface you will take, suppose you will take a cylinder and the cylinder is enclosed or the total number of charge enclosed by the cylinder, I will take it as a Q. Okay. So this charge Q, hmm, so the total flux is equal to this charge Q divided by the permittivity in the free space. This is the statement or mathematical statement of your gospel. Okay, and theoretical statement, I have already given the notes, so you can just see from the notes. Okay, so this is the mathematical part, but now the total number of lines of force, again I will repeat, the total number of lines of force that is nothing but an electric flux, hmm, that is equal to the 1 by epsilon 0 times, again I will repeat, 1 by epsilon 0 times of the total charge enclosed by that closed surface. Whatever that may be a sphere, that may be a cylinder, or that may be a box. Now, there is a term related here that is the closed surface. So, that closed surface uh, in the physical term, I will denote it as a Gaussian surface. That is a very important one. That closed surface is called Gaussian surface, which is a very important concept here. Whatever the closed surface I will take, that may be a sphere, that may be a box, that may be a cylinder. That closed surface, I will name it is a particular or important name or a specific name that closed surface is called Gaussian surface. Okay. And this is my mathematical statement. Hmm. In the mathematical statement again I will repeat because this is very very important from the problem point of view, from the exam point of view. Okay. So that flux, that is the total number of lines of force passing through any closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 times of the total charge enclosed within that surface. So this is my mathematical statement of your ghost law. And whatever the closed surface I will take, that closed surface is called Gaussian surface. Thank you.